Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at the Ensign Celfix 820. So let's get into it. Hey guys, so this is the Ensign Celfix 820. For those who are not familiar, Ensign was a camera company in the UK in the early 21st century. Um, they made a lot of decent cameras, but at the time, especially pre-World War II, uh, German cameras and Russian cameras were really taking the market. And then, as you can imagine, as the war was going on, and especially when it ended, it was harder to get imports from those countries. Um, so Ensign set out to build a camera that would be com um, competitive with the German and the Russian cameras, and this is the one that came out, and it turned out to be a really great camera. I won't get too far into the technical specs because there's some information online already about that from people that know a lot more of it than I do, but I will post links to that in the description for you guys. So mostly, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about why I have this camera, how I acquired it, and, and kind of first impressions on build quality and kind of having this camera for about a month or so now. Um, kind of what I think of it. Uh, and then towards the end, we'll put some pictures up too from it so you guys can see kind of how good the lens is and, and uh, what the quality looks like. So right off the bat, you can see it's a folding camera. I have played with a few folding cameras in the past, like Kodaks and stuff like that, but the trouble is they're all uh, 620 cameras and you gotta make modifications in order to shoot 120 film. And the whole situation was I've been looking for a decent camera to shoot 120 film for a really long time. And as you know, some of the more modern stuff, um, I guess you could say semi-modern, like the Mamiya 7s and stuff, are pretty expensive. So I didn't want to get into a whole lot of money with it, but at the same time, I wanted something that was going to be good quality. Um, so anyway, I found this one, found it on Etsy, did a little bit of research on it. And then first impression when it come in is the build quality, and this is like fantastic. It's a good, solid camera. Um, one of the main perks that I really liked about this, I didn't see on a whole lot of others, is a lot of these older 1940s, even you know 1930 cameras, folding cameras, have a six by six negative, so it's a square, um, which I wasn't really that fond of. This particular one, as you can see in the back, has two sliding doors, one says 12 and one says eight. So you can shoot a six by six square in the negative, or there's these um, little flaps, little metal flaps in there that I can't show you because I got film in it, but they flip open into each side of the uh, film cavities giving you a six by nine centimeter, a centimeter negative, which is a really good size. And you'll see some from some of the pictures later on how nice they look, um, but simple siding doors. These are missing the red filters in there. But I did a little research on that and, and they're not really too necessary anymore, especially if you stay out of direct sunlight or don't leave the window open very long. If somebody knows a little bit different on that, let me know in the comments because I'd like to know, but just from my research, that's how it appears. So let's just kind of take a walk around this camera. Um, starting here, this is your film uh, loading side, which I guess would be your guys' left. This knob doesn't really rotate much. The top of it does turn, and that's your field of view. And I'll throw some close-up pictures on here too throughout the course of this so you guys can kind of see better what, what I'm looking at here. But field of view I don't have a lot of experience with. I've never done a whole lot with it. Um, so this is probably a good opportunity to learn a little bit. Uh, but basically it's gonna tell you your distance and your aperture and help you determine what aperture you want for what distance to make sure your shot's perfectly clear. Next to this, on the right side, you would probably expect to be your shutter release, but it's actually your release button for the bellow. The shutter is actually on the left side. 
and it's not threaded. It's just a button, so you can't insert a shutter uh, release cable into this. It actually is gonna go into the bellow. So as you push the button here, it's gonna pop open. And this one opens up really well. I use some uh, clock oil, full synthetic clock oil, on a lot of these things, um, just on the hinges and stuff to get them moving really well. And that's basically meant for like grandfather clocks and stuff like that. So it's full synthetic and it's really gentle on the equipment. And of course, you always wanna keep that away from the shutter and the mechanisms as well. So as you see the bellows in really good condition. You got two crossbars coming out on either side. They just come out straight. The lens is a 105 millimeter Ross lens, which is a UK lens at the time. The aperture goes anywhere from 4.5 to 22, which is a pretty decent range, and it's controlled right here on the side. And of course you have focusing right here, which goes from 1.5 meters to infinity. Just turning that, and then your shutter, which is a nice plus on this camera too, because some of these older cameras don't have a super fast shutter speed, so this goes all the way from one second to one two fiftieths of a second which is nice because a lot of those Kodak folding cameras, those 820s, only go up to like 100th of a second or, or 1 one fiftieth. Uh, I also have a bulb setting and a time setting. And of course, the only difference between a bulb and a time setting is with bulb, you hold it down and as soon as you release, the shutter is going to close. And with the time, you have to click it twice, once to open it and then once again to close it. The shutter cable is right down here on the, on the bellow or on the lens. Um, I believe that's standard as well. Um, in the middle here is the eyepiece with a viewfinder. And as you flip this up, the front comes up as well. And it's a nice piece of glass in there. And what's kind of cool that I didn't know originally when I bought it is there's a little inlay, a colored, uh, almost a white painted inlay of the six by six and the six by nine um, frame. So as you look through this back viewfinder, that reflects off that glass and you can actually see um, where you should be shooting. And so far it seems to work, seems to work pretty well. So to the left of that, or I guess to your guys' uh, right, you can see this is a shutter release button. In order for this to fire, there is a lever on the side. You have to cock the um, shutter each time before you release it and there is a, a double exposure prevention built in, so you do have to wind. So once you push that down, if I was to push that down right now, and there was a, a blank negative back here, but the shutter wasn't wound, um, I'm gonna have to advance the film in order to use that button again. So that is kind of something you gotta keep in mind. The knob over here now, this is your take-up spool. And again, when I got this, some of these parts are pretty you can tell they didn't have much oil on them after all these years. So I used a little bit of that clock oil and it really loosened them up and they turned very, very nicely now. Um, and again, that's just your take up spool. So um, once you take your shot, open your window, advance to the next, to the next shot. Outside of that, I just really like this camera. It's done a really good job. So now I'll throw some pictures up. Um, I took just a few shots in town of this old blue bus that uh, somebody's running kind of like a vintage clothing store out of. It came out really cool. It, this bus has been here for a few years and I love just coming by every so often and taking some shots of it. So I, I have a lot of shots from different cameras as well. A few other things just to mention on this before we end the video here is there obviously is no range finder in this thing and there is no meter. So you're gonna have to do all your metering on the side. Or like I, I just use my phone, I have an app on my phone that I use that for. And um, they did make a higher end, two higher end models of this, and one was a range finder, and I, I believe one had a meter on it. Um, I could be mistaken. Um, but other than that, um, it's a really good camera. I'm very pleased with it. I've been looking a long time for a 120, and I'm gonna take a lot more pictures with it and share it with you guys here and on the Instagram and, and everything else. Uh, the strap, I'll put the link in the description for that as well. That came from the UK. Um, it's advertised all the time on um, on Instagram, so I'll throw that in there. It's really good quality, and I managed to attach it to its normal um, handle lugs here on the side. Uh, so other than that, um, I will have uh, some videos coming up with those Kodak folding cameras that I brought, that I was talking about earlier, the Vigil and the Vigil and Junior, and talk about how I converted them over to 120 film. And 
other than that, that's that's all I got, guys. So be sure to check out my Instagram at Akira135 Photography and on the web at Akira135.com and like and subscribe to the video and any comments, any comments you may have, just put them below. And other than that, you guys be kind to each other. We'll see you next time. Thank you.